Hello and welcome or welcome back to my Dandelion Diaries. Today I'm going to be going over the seven pens that I have currently inked for the month of April and I'm going to be going over the inks that I'm using as well, showing the bottles, big swatches, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's just get started with my first pen and my newest pen. This is the Estherbrook SD in Winter White with the gold trim. I decided to get this in a Flex Fine nib. I'd never tried the Flex Fine before, and I have some thoughts. First off, I decided to ink this up with Birmingham Pen Company's Antique Sepia. I really wanted to put a fun shading ink in this pen because it's white and it can take literally any color under the sun. Um, but the thoughts I have are primarily on this Flex Fine nib. It was not exciting. Like, I wasn't overwhelmed. I guess I was expecting it to be a little bit more of, like, a variation between fine to medium. Um, it honestly writes more like a medium than a fine, which I'm fine with because I like the Estherbrook medium nibs and I like the Estherbrook fine nib the best. I was just kind of, like, surprised, I guess, with this nib choice that I made. Um, I may end up switching it out to the fine nib that I like, but we'll see what happens. For the bottle of ink, like I said, this is the Birmingham Pen Company's Antique Sepia. It is like this. I added this little sticker myself. And the thing I love most about this ink is the shading, like I mentioned. It has just the coolest, most dynamic shading. Um, also, I apologize if you hear a dog. It's, it's my dog Apollo. <laughs> um, but the shading on this ink is fantastic. It goes from almost like a beigey brown color to like a green, but it's kind of sagey and blue at the same time. Very unique. And it also changes color from when it's like a wet ink to a drier ink. And dried, it turns up much more of like a grayish brownish green color. As for that flex nib like I was talking about, it's just not as exciting as I wanted it to be, but the Estherbrook SD pen body is definitely one of my favorites for my hands. Um, I feel like I have fairly large hands to average hands for a woman. I don't really have small hands, <laughs> um, but it fits really well for me. Um, my only complaint with the Estherbrook SDs is if you like a posting pen, they post, but they aren't posting very securely, at least for me. The next pen I have inked up is one of my Franken pens. Um, this is a Jinhao 82 that I took the end caps off of one pen and put them on this one. This is in a medium nib. And I decided to put my new ink that I got, the De Atramentis Document Dark Green in this because I had some feelings when I first swatched the ink. So when I originally got the De Atramentis Document Dark Green ink, it was bleeding through the paper like mad. And I was really nervous because I had bought a full bottle of this, which I'll show in a second. But I will say putting it into this Jinhao 82, even with the medium nib, I have not experienced any bleeding in the writing pages. But I'm going to see if it does any bleeding in the swatch this time around again. But I honestly love this color and I love this combination. And it's a great, great pairing for what I wanted to use it for. Here is the bottle of the De Atramentis Document Ink in dark green. Um, I love the bottles from De Atramentis because they're glass. Uh, a lot of people may not like glass ink bottles, but I love glass ink bottles. And the shape of these are just really nice and like to hold. Like if I needed to hold it and like dip, it's nice because it has this little lip on it. I don't know. There's just something about these bottles that, that feels nice. The color of this document dark green ink is exactly what I was looking for in a dark green. Um, it doesn't have any shading to black or anything, but it's a nice dark cool green color. Very foresty to me. Um, it's the color I was looking for, so I was really nervous when it bled through the paper on my original swatch of it, actually in this notebook. Um, I would say with the writing, I haven't experienced any bleed through or feathering or anything in a pen. And like I said, I wanted to put it in a medium just to make sure like, okay, is it really gonna bleed through? Um, and in this Jin Hao medium, it did not do anything out of the ordinary that I've, yeah, it, it was great. The only complaint I have with this specific combination was I feel like my Jin Hao nib dragged on the paper a little bit, so I may have to do a little bit of finagling with some brass sheets or something to see what's going on with the nib, uh, just because it's a really inexpensive pen. Maybe it was damaged, I didn't clean it well enough, whatever, but I think I just need to look at the pen. I don't think it had anything to do with the ink. 
The next pen I had inked up is my Twisby Rose Gold with Emerald Gardens by Ferris Will Press. This is a new release from them. This is in an extra fine nib, um, and I really wanted to give it a chance to show the shimmer in an extra fine uh, just because I wanted to see how this would behave. And I must say pairing these two together has been such a fun writing experience. I feel like this ink by Fairsoul Press is probably one of my new favorites by them. I am in love with this green color and in love with the shimmer. And putting it in something that can hold a large ink capacity was something I was a little nervous on and something that having an extra fine nib I was also really nervous on. But I didn't have any clogs so far, no issues with skipping or hard starts, nothing. This was absolutely wonderful to write with. So here is the box by Ferrisol Press. Um, I do have a light on to kind of showcase this because it's hard to see because the whole thing is foiled. But it does say on the side here that it has a green base, a red sheen, a green and gold shimmer, and no shading. Um, and I would definitely agree with all of those things. Here is the bottle itself. Beautiful. Um, there's the shimmer if you can see it. And we're gonna swatch this. My only thing with this ink that I would wish for more than it already is, is for the red sheen that it has to be a little bit more vibrant. I really wanted to have that kind of rose with the green background that I know they were going for with kind of like Beauty and the Beast, you know, rose gardens kind of feel. I just wish that red pop popped a little bit more than it does. But the color of this is a beautiful green and the shimmer just adds to it. And I'm really, I really like this color quite a lot. Next pen I had inked up is my Pilot Metropolitan in gold. And I decided to just put a cartridge in this one. I put part, uh, Pilot Light Blue, but this is in a fine nib. And this was honestly a really nice pairing so far this month. It's bright and blue like the sky, which is kind of what I'm going for. Um, and also just the fact that in a fine nib, it still shows the beautiful shading of this ink. I was really quite happy with it. Um, Pilot Metropolitans were my starting pen and this one has been in my collection for a very long time and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So I realized after I did the swatch, I forgot to show the box. Um, this is the Pilot Blue that I'm, light blue that I'm using. It's just the standard Pilot ink. Um, this is one of my favorite colors from this line of Pilot ink cartridges. And one thing I really quite like about this ink, like I said, is the shading that it has. It has this beautiful shade of like light blue to kind of like a medium blue in there. Um, it may pull through some of the ink on the other side of the page since I am doing this back to back, but it is truly just a nice aqua blue color. Um, it's, it's just really qu quite stunning um, if you like a light blue color like this. The next pen I have inked up here is my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande 2.0 in Sunflower with the gold trim or Griasol with the gold trim. I have this in an extra fine nib and I ink this up with Diamonds Jacaranda. And this combination fit perfectly into the theme that I was going for. Um, I love this color. This color is from the Diamine 2023 Purple Ink Vent. And the shading in it is beautiful. Um, it was a nice, bright, cool-toned, lavender-y like purple. And I was really, really happy with it. It does not match this pen whatsoever. But it performed very well with the extra fine uh, MZG nib. I would say that the extra fine nib is not something I reach for very often now. I'm reaching more for like fine nibs to medium, but I really, really like the Leonardo's extra fine nib. I don't know if it's because it's more of like a Western fine or extra fine, but it's a really nice fit for me. Here is the tiny bottle of Jacaranda that I have. Like I said, it is from that purple ink vent. It is a standard ink, so there is no shimmer, sheen, or nothing. It's just a nice flat ink. I truly am enamored with the color of this. It is perfectly purpley, blue, pink. It's just such a lovely purple color. Um, I don't think I have another purple ink like this in my collection. So when I opened this out of the Diamine Purple Ink Vent, I was like, yay, because it's a purple that I hadn't really been able to try before. I could see this being compared to something like Sailor Monyo Fuji or any of the Monyo line just because of the 
brightness of the purple but ultimately this is a color all on its own spectrum it is absolutely gorgeous love this pairing love this ink definitely want to put this ink in a broader nib next time just because i really love the color and i want to see a lot more of it the next pen I had inked up is this cutie right here. This is a Caveco Sport in the Iridescent Pearl. I have this with a medium nib unit in it. I like to just change out my nib units for these because I, I don't want to have a whole collection of them. I know they're very easy to collect, but um, they're all kind of the same to me. It's just a different color, and I don't really match my pens to colors or anything. Anyways, this is inked up with Monteverde's Purple Rain. And this has honestly been a really nice pairing. The Caveco Medium Nib, I think is my favorite nib from them, um, just because it's like the perfect writing for me with this size of pen. I don't know how else to describe that. Um, but the pairing of the iridescence with the kind of red purple that I was going for with this did match actually pretty well for matching a color to a pen. Um, it was just a really nice pairing. I did have a few issues though with the ink, which I'll talk about here in a second. So the issues that I mainly had with this ink were pretty much user error, I'm gonna be honest. Um, so I tried to uh, color <laughs> with this ink and pen pairing. I, I basically made some headers that I wanted and I tried to color them in and I think I literally just applied so much ink on the page that it bled through to the other side. So I'm gonna call that user error because I've never had Monteverde bleed through on Tomoe River paper. Um, but yeah, I really liked the color of this ink. It is bright, it is vibrant, it is definitely more of a red purple. And honestly, the name Purple Rain just screams the Prince song in my head. Like every time I hear that name, it's just Purple Rain. Anyways, uh, I'm not gonna sing on camera. For the, the pairing, I would say like I love the medium Caveco nib and I love the color of this ink um, and it did match the theme that I was going for. So I have no complaints other than my user error where I just applied way too much and probably scraped through the paper with my pen. And the last pen that I had inked up for the month of April is my Bennu Euphoria in the Iced Caramel Latte model, which is a Goulet Pens exclusive and I have this in a fine nib. And I decided to ink this up with a ink that was sent to me by a viewer. So thank you so much, Darren, for sending this one to me. I inked it up with Robert Oster's Boysenberry Swirl, which is this nice rosy pink with some shimmer. Overall, this pairing was okay. I honestly got really frustrated uh, at some point, and it's because my nib and feed got totally clogged with the shimmer in this ink. Um, I don't know why that happened because I've never had a clog from Robert Oster inks before and I've been using them for a really long time. So I'm not sure, not sure what's happening with that, but the color of this is so beautiful. Um, it didn't really match the pen. Again, I don't really care, but it was nice to write with other than the one clogging issue I had. So this is what the bottle looks like. Again, thank you so much, Darian, for sending me this beautiful ink. Um, this was actually part of the Melbourne 2023 pen show, according to this little sticker right here, which I think is really quite nifty. You can see all of the shimmer down here on the bottom is kind of like a coppery rose gold color. It's very beautiful and it matches the ink very well. Um, I just found that it clogged my pen, which was a first for me with Robert Oster inks. Like I was saying, the color of this ink is a beautiful rosy pink. Um, it even has a little bit of purple haloing to it and the rosy coppery gold shimmer is fantastic with this color. Um, I honestly really want to put this into a stub nib and just go ham with like hand lettering practice because it was such a beautiful color to write with. But the one, the one time, one time out of the whole month that I had it clog the pen, um, it could have even been user error. I do store my pens flat. I don't put them in a cup when I'm using them. So it could have just been the, the glitter or whatever it is settled in the feed. It was really easy to fix. Um, I just had to like clean the feed really quickly with some water and it was totally back to normal. So really quick fix. It was just kind of a first for me to get a clog with the Robert Oster ink since I've used shimmer ones and I've never had any problems before. But the color of this was fantastic and again it matched my theme that I was going for very very perfectly. 
And on that note, the theme that I really wanted to go with for this month related more towards my birthday, which is on the 23rd of April. So I really wanted to go with something purple, which is one of my favorite colors. And I really wanted to go something more with spring, which is like a garden. So I decided to name my theme this month a violet garden, which kind of coincides with, you know, emerald gardens, dark green ink, antique sepia is kind of just an odd color I guess to put in here blue for like a blue sky a couple of purples and a pink to just denote some flowery colors in there and ultimately I really like this color palette it is very soothing to me and was really really fun to write with so far for this month and I'm excited to finish the month with these colors ultimately I think I'm reaching more towards purple inks now again I I feel like I'm cycling through my browns greens and purples which I've done before last year I was really into the greens and don't get me wrong I'm still really into the greens but purple inks have just been really starting to intrigue me um, especially after getting to play with some of the Birmingham Pen Company Atomics which I'll get to hopefully in another video but I'm really enjoying playing around with a bunch of different colors right now. Overall, this group of pens and inks was a really nice group. Um, I wanted to showcase really quick that the document ink did not bleed through this time. So I think when I did it before, let's see if I can find it in here. When I did it here and it bled through really terribly, I think I had just done too much ink on the page. So um, yeah, I'm glad to see that is not the case, but the Antique Sepia was probably one of my favorites to write with for this month, as was the Emerald Gardens. This ink, you guys, okay, so it's showing really gold on camera, but I just, it's, it's, it's really green in person. Um, I guess, let me see if I can get it to do the, the shift. Okay, so that's kind of like a greenish color. So you can kind of see the green there and then it goes back to gold when it's flat. It's such a beautiful ink, such a beautiful one. And I'm so, 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 so glad to have it in my collection. But the those two are probably my favorite first two inks. And then the Diamine Jacaranda, this, this color, y'all, just the camera does not do this justice. It is so vibrant in person and has this beautiful lavender-esque look to it. I really hope when they release the 2023 full bottles that um, I can get one of these because this one is probably one of my favorites from that group. It's just such a gorgeous color. And then for the Pilot Light Blue, it did bleed through a little bit of the green from the other side. It does not have any green in it whatsoever. It's mainly just this bluish color. And like I said, that Robert Oster's Boysenberry Swirl is gorgeous. I just think I want to put it in a stub nib next time because I was a little overzealous by putting all of my shimmer inks in fines <laughs> this month. But anyways, let me zoom in on this one too because the shimmer on it is just absolutely stunning. So beautiful, so, so, so beautiful. And you can kind of see a little bit of like the purple haloing for this. The Monteverde's Purple Rain, like I said, did that bleeding thing. It did not do it in the big swatch. So I think I literally just colored through the page, which user error, it happens, it's fine. But I've been really enjoying um, playing with purple inks, like I was saying, and I'm really happy to have Violet Garden be my theme for this month. Anyways, if you have any questions about anything I used today, any of the inks, pens, supplies, whatever, let's chat about it down in the comments. If you like my naming system, I would love to hear about it. Or if you have a better name for this color scheme of kind of like greens and purples, love to hear that too. I'd love to see what you guys come up with and how creative you can be. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, for joining me here today, for spending some time with my inks in my fun little ink journal, and I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.